Hi, I'm Virginia Stockwell. My channel is all about becoming a personal chef. So if you're interested in becoming a personal chef, please subscribe. And if you ever have any questions at all, I have my email below and just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have in an upcoming video. So this video is all about the 10 mistakes that most chefs make on their websites. And I see these over and over. And the biggest one is about the landing page. When creating websites, I see chefs often putting their information about themselves on the landing page. But think about the potential client looking online um, for personal chef services in your area. When they click on your website, you know what they're thinking? What can you do for me? They're truly not interested, first of all, in seeing what the chef's background is and all that. That definitely should be on there, but on a different page other than the landing page. The landing page really needs to be all about the potential client and about what you could do for them. The second mistake I see a lot are being super wordy on the website. Um, you don't want it to be sort of novel-like. You want to have one to three lines describing your services, um, you know, a little blurb about your background, etc. But there should be more photos about, more food photos actually, on your website than words. I was definitely a victim of this myself. I spent all this time on my website making what I thought was a great website. I sent it over to my friend and said, hey, tell me your honest feedback, what do you think? And her only response is, too wordy. And she was so right. I think I was spending a lot of time trying to answer all the questions that a potential client might have when I could truly just answer them in a consultation. All I really needed to have on my website was basic information about my services and about who I am, sample menus, and food photos. I mean, going beyond that, no one's really hanging out on your website. The third mistake I see a lot is the chef photo. So you want your photo to look exactly like you when you show up for a consultation. So you want the uh, potential client whose home you're going to to recognize you when you show up. Uh, so having a photo from 10 years ago isn't going to work. You really need to update that photo. It doesn't even have to be a professional photo. It could be something taken with your cell phone, but it should be current. So the fourth mistake I see a lot are the quality of your photos. So I'm talking about the food photos on the website. And by quality, I don't mean the quality of the food. I mean the quality of the photo. So it should be good lighting on... It's the lighting really that makes all the difference in photos. And uh, cell phone cameras have come a long way. So probably the reason why your food photos don't look so good is because they were taken years ago. So it's time to go on your cook sessions and take some new photos and start slowly uploading and changing those photos as something that really showcases what you can do for your clients. The number five mistake that I see are not focusing on your niche or your services. So you might um, list your services on your website, but you don't need to list every single service that you ever did or that you plan on doing. Um, I think just focus. So it's understandable to list some services that you do, but you probably have one main service that really makes most of your money or that you super enjoy doing. So talk about that the most. Uh, spend a whole page talking about that. And then maybe on the side say, also, I do these services. But you don't want to talk extensively about all the services that you do because again, you're getting into too wordy territory. And then this one, it seems so obvious, but the number six mistake is not listing your location or your website. And have you ever been to, you know you've looked around some other chef websites, so don't act like you haven't. Um, have you ever been looking around at chef websites and you're wondering where are they? It's not real clear. You have to hunt all over the website to try and figure out where what location they're serving. And you want to, even though it may be obvious, you want to list your state too. So say it's Springfield. You know how many Springfields there are in the United States? So you want to be really particular about what location that you're serving. And I suppose this one is subjective, but the number seven mistake I see, and again, this is subjective, is putting a contact form on your website instead of just listing your email. Why do you feel the need to put a contact form on there? You're making someone kind of work to contact you. They have to fill out their name and then click down again and fill out their email. Click down again, fill out some information. You know, if you just list your email on there, they will reply with probably more information that you're expecting. So yeah, just, just put your email on there and they'll contact you the proper way. And what also helps when 
they use their email provider to send you an email and you reply back, you're probably less likely to land in their spam folder. And the number eighth mistake I see is listing a social platform that you can also be seen on, like Facebook or Instagram or something like that. But when a potential client clicks on the link, it goes to your Facebook that you haven't posted anything for six months. So if you're going to be listing social media platforms on your website for other ways for people to check out your work, um, you want to be sure that it's updated or it kind of looks like you went out of business. And speaking of updating regularly, number nine is you need to put on your calendar, your work calendar, to check your website at least quarterly and make sure everything's up to date. You might be surprised about things you're like, oh yeah, I forgot I don't offer that service anymore and you forgot to take it off your website. And it's cool to look at it too because you, um, now that you've walked away, you can come back and be like, wow, you know what? Um, this photo over here is not the best um, showing off my best work. So I want to replace that. So it's cool to step back and take a fresh look back at it every quarter. And my 10th offering is to make your website interesting. So your website should be a reflection of who you are. So show off your personality in it. And I'm not even going to drop hints about what you should do on it because you're going to know what you can do to this to make it more like you. Making a website's fun, so put some fun into it and add your personality to it. If this video helped you at all, please like it. And my email again is below for questions. I love receiving questions, so don't ever feel like you're bothering me. I super enjoy receiving those emails. So I hope everyone has a good day. Thanks for watching.